Hey sports fans, Larry Eater, Run Blog Run. In January 2020, we're going to talk about Alberto Salazar for a while and uh, how he got a little too close to the sun. Like our friend Icarus. Yeah, if you don't know who Icarus is, look it up, okay? All right, first things first, transparency. Um, I've known Alberto since we were in our 20s. Uh, we were in college. He was at Oregon. I was at Santa Clara University. See each other a couple times a year at cross-country events. I recall our senior year. Oh, well, my, my first senior year. So that would have been 1980. And uh, Alberto and uh, Henry Rono, then world record holder four times over, were beating the crap out of each other on this tough cross-country course at Stanford. Um, some good hills on the back of the Stanford golf course, but as you came in for the last mile, it was flat, it was dusty, it was tough. And you just wanted to sit down and have a sandwich and a beer, and you had to put it together to keep your head together. And over that last mile, they ran about four minutes and 12 seconds. And how do I know this? I was three quarters of a mile back, and they were coming alongside me, and I could feel the wind from them. Uh, as they battled it out. It was like watching the movie Raging Bull. Two boxers throwing punches, one after another, connecting, not knowing when the other one was going to fall. Both were redlining it. Both were pushing as hard as they can. Henry Rono was a brutally tough athlete in his prime, and Alberto, you knew, and you knew his stories later, how tough he was. And it was exciting. Um, I saw Alberto in 1981 at the U.S. Championships after his first uh, 208.13 short marathon and uh, when Adrian Royal beat him on the cross-country course. About three weeks later, and uh, he was kind of running by himself, and I think he felt the whole world was trying to kick his ass. Um, Alberto became an Olympian, top American runner, never achieved the things that he wanted to achieve. In the 90s, he won the Comrades Marathon. Then he went into coaching. And uh, I recently talked to a good friend of Alberto's and asked him what he thought, why Alberto went into coaching. And he said that Alberto wanted to teach athletes how not to make the same mistakes as him. And he was going to give them every benefit he could. And his intentions were well-meaning. Um, he started coaching athletes about 19, I think, 94, 95. And he had some good success. He also had some kids who didn't do as well. And it was um, it was a challenge. When the Nike or Oregon Project started about 2000, uh, what, six or seven, he had some fantastic athletes, Kara Goucher, uh, Adam Goucher, a certain athlete by the name of Rupp, who continued to develop. Mo Farah came into the group. Uh, London 2012 was pretty exciting for them. And by that time, there were already people accusing Alberto of doing more than pushing the envelope. I understood pushing the envelope. I just didn't think he would go past that. And I'm still not sure he did. What I think he did wrong is he drove the groups like Wada and Usada absolutely birdshit crazy with his questions and his ability to push the envelope. And like Icarus trying to get close to the sun, he got a little too close, and they had to make an example of him. This is all going to be decided in court now. What's sad are the athletes that have been hurt. Mary Kane's very thoughtful piece in the New York Times must be read. Kara Goucher, who has written bravely about a lot of this these challenges over the last four to five years also should be read and respected. I also think that there's lessons for coaches, both male and female, to understand at the end of the day, this is still a sport, and it's only a sport and it's part of life. And someday, that athlete is going to become a farmer athlete. And what skills, what life skills have you taught them to survive in that world? So think about the, the Alberto Salazar situation. Know that there's People who have been hurt and need to be heard. There's people who will catch on to anything and try to make it a little worse. And we'll have to wait and see how this plays out.
But uh, as Let's Run said, Alberto has been one of the driving forces in our sport for a decade. I don't think it's all because of bad things. I do think it's that gray area that we all have to watch. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run, signing off. Please check out our platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, the website Run Blog Run, and the Running Network, and our blog Run Blog Run. Thanks to the Shoe Addicts for doing the podcast. Thanks to Brian Eater for convincing me to do the blog back in 2007. And thank you, dear listeners, for listening to our podcast.